Welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. And, you know, today we're going to be taking a look at something that I think a lot of companies are struggling with right now, mm -hmm. how to prepare their managers yeah. for the future of leadership. It's a big one. It's a really big one. And I don't think it's a secret to anybody listening that remote work and AI and freelancing, mm -hmm. it's changing the game out there. Yeah. So thankfully, we have a great resource to kind of guide us through all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Nuri Dimirci Lopez, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always mispronounce his name. Yeah. Uh, but he is an expert who has been leading large remote and freelance teams for years. Mm -hmm. And he even wrote a book called Leading the Unknown. So he's got experience and he's got the theory and the concepts down. Yeah. And I love that title. Yeah. Leading the unknown, because that's kind of what we're all doing right now. Absolutely. Nobody has all the answers. Right. So I'm excited to dig in and see what he has to well, say. Me too. So before we even get into like, the, you know, specific leadership styles or anything like that, sure. just let's talk about the shift that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lopez makes it very clear in his book. Yeah. The future of work is remote. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. and freelance driven 100 percent. it's not like a question anymore yeah it's just happening he's spot on yeah and you know remember the gig economy was already taking off before the pandemic hit yeah and covid19 just poured fuel on the fire oh yeah you know by 2019 mm -hmm. freelancers in the u.s alone contributed a staggering 1.2 trillion dollars to the economy yeah like that's wild that's a huge number yeah and it's only grown since then of course um, and I think, you know, we can thank technology for a lot of this, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the platform is connecting freelancers mm -hmm. with companies all across the world. Yeah. They're popping up left and right. For sure. You know? But it's really interesting to see how it's changing the way companies operate. Yeah. You know, when you can tap into this global talent pool so easily, mm -hmm. it forces companies to rethink how they manage and lead. Right. You know, like the old command and control style? Yeah. That just doesn't work in this new landscape. It just doesn't work anymore. No. Which is kind of where things start to get really interesting. Right. Because Lopez argues mm -hmm. that this shift is creating a leadership gap. Oh, yeah. He says a lot of traditional management training mm -hmm. focuses on really superficial skills. Right. Instead of the core qualities that you need to actually lead effectively in this new world. 100%. And the data backs it up, too. Oh, really? Yeah. You look at employee polls, mm -hmm. and they consistently show that workers today are craving something more. Yeah. You know, it's not just about having a boss. Right. They want a leader mm. who's authentic and caring. Yeah. And who can actually guide them through this uncertainty. Through all this change. Yeah, through all this change. And it feels like you can't fake it anymore. Mm -hmm. No. Especially not through a screen. Exactly right. Like, I mean, how many times have we all been on a Zoom call? Right. Where you could just tell the person's like reading off a script. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it doesn't land the same way anymore. It feels so disingenuous. Yeah. But you know, that doesn't mean that remote leadership can't be done well. Right. In fact, some of the most successful leaders that Lopez has worked with have been remote. Interesting. Yeah, it all comes down to mindset and skill set. Okay, so let's break down some of the specific differences then mm -hmm. between leading, like you said, a known local team yeah. versus a remote, right. often unknown team. It is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, and Lopez highlights some key challenges. He does. The first being communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we all can agree Yeah. that building trust and rapport is just harder Right. when you're not physically together. It definitely is. It just is. Think about it. You know, you miss out on those informal interactions. The quick chats in the hallway. Yeah. The body language cues mm -hmm. that help you build those relationships. It's so much harder to read people mm -hmm. when you're not in person. Yeah. You can't really get a sense of their energy or their mood as easily yeah. through a screen. So what are some ways that leaders can bridge that gap? Well... They have to be intentional about it. Mm. They can schedule regular check-ins. Okay. Uh, utilize video conferencing mm -hmm. to kind of get that face-to-face -face connection. Yeah. And make a real effort to get to know their team members mm. on a personal level. Yeah. It sounds like they have to go above and beyond. Absolutely. What they would normally do in an office. Yeah. And then feedback is another area mm -hmm. where remote leaders 
need to step up. It's so easy for remote workers, yeah, particularly freelancers, to feel overlooked or forgotten about. Especially when they're not physically there right. to remind you that they exist. Exactly. Right. So leaders need to be proactive about soliciting feedback mm. and recognizing achievements. It's mm. about celebrating those wins, big and small. Mm -hmm. And making sure everyone feels seen and appreciated. Yeah. You know? And then let's not forget work-life balance. Oh, that's a huge one. Okay. Especially with remote work. It's so blurry. Ah, uh, the lines are so blurred. You know. <laughs> Leaders need to respect time zones. Mm-hmm. Set clear expectations about work hours. Right. And encourage their team to actually disconnect and recharge. Yeah. It's about fostering that culture of trust and flexibility where people feel supported and empowered yeah. to manage their own time and workloads. So we've got all these challenges, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But Lopez believes there's a certain magic yeah. to leading in this new world of work. Mm -hmm. And it all starts with caring. Oh, he's a big believer in that. It's not just an empty corporate buzzword for him. No, not at all. Like he genuinely believes yeah. that caring for your team is like the foundation yeah. of everything. He's adamant that Genuine care for your team yeah. can't be taught. Mm -hmm. It has to come from within. Yeah. It's about truly seeing your team members as people, right. not just cogs in a machine. Yeah, and it's about helping them achieve their goals, mm -hmm. professionally and personally. Exactly. And this leads into another critical quality. Okay. Leading with purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, he takes inspiration from figures like okay. Microsoft Satya Nadella, mm. Unilever's Paul Pullman. Yeah. These are leaders who've achieved incredible success mm -hmm. while staying true to their values. Yeah. So it's about aligning your team around a clear why. Exactly. Their purpose. Their purpose. And this becomes even more crucial. Mm-hmm when you're not physically together every day. It gives people that sense of direction and motivation, yeah. even when they're working remotely. And that sense of community too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shared purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. so this all sounds great in theory, but how do you actually build these authentic connections mm -hmm. when you're leading a remote team? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. What practical advice does Lopez offer? Well, it might surprise you, but he advocates for some surprisingly simple acts. Okay. Like, Personalized welcome calls for new team members. Mm -hmm. It's a small gesture. Yeah. But it makes people feel valued from the start. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how that would go a long way. Especially when you're new to a team. Especially in those early days. And working remotely. Yeah. You know, you're already feeling a little bit isolated. What else? Uh, virtual coffee breaks. Yeah. Just a chance for people to chat. Mm -hmm. Get to know each other outside of work. Yeah. Replicate those water cooler moments that you'd typically have in an office. Like those informal interactions we were talking about earlier. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, it's all about creating those opportunities for connection. And it sounds like a lot of this comes down to vulnerability. Oh, for sure. Being yeah. willing to admit mistakes. Yeah. Value feedback. Mm -hmm. Show your human side. It's about being real. Yeah. And relatable. Those are all qualities that build trust, right? Absolutely. Especially remotely. Trust is the foundation of any successful team. Yeah. But it's even more critical in a remote environment. For sure. Because you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction to rely on, yeah. you know? Okay, so building on that, mm -hmm. Lopez also emphasizes the importance of inspiration. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm curious about this one. Mm -hmm. Where does he find inspiration? Well, believe it or not, mm -hmm. He draws inspiration from historical figures okay. like Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela. Wow. You know, these are leaders who faced incredible challenges yeah. and inspired others to achieve what seemed impossible. I mean, I could definitely see the parallels right. to leading in today's world. Absolutely. Yeah. Their stories offer valuable lessons mm -hmm. about resilience motivation yeah. and keeping sight of the bigger picture. Even amid setbacks, even when things are tough. Yeah. You know? It's almost like tapping into that historical wisdom mm -hmm. can give us a roadmap yeah. for navigating this uncharted territory. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about adapting those timeless principles mm -hmm. to the challenges we face today. Okay, so we've talked about the qualities mm -hmm. of a great leader yeah. in this new world yeah. of work. Yeah. But what about the practical strategies and tools? Right, because that's what people really want to know. Now we're talking. Right. This is what I'm curious about. Yeah. What are some of the tactics okay. that he's used successfully? One that really stands out is the concept of silent meetings. 
Silent meeting. Silent meeting. Okay, you've got my attention. I know, right? How does that even work? It's pretty ingenious, actually. The <laughs> idea is that everyone contributes their ideas in writing first. Okay. That way, even the quietest members of the team mm -hmm. have a chance to be heard without the pressure of speaking up in a group setting. It's almost like it levels the playing field. Exactly. Yeah. It democratizes the brainstorming process. Oh, I love that. You know? And it seems like this would be especially valuable mm -hmm. for remote teams. Oh, absolutely. Where it's so easy yeah. for some voices to get lost right, yeah. in the digital chatter. Exactly. Right. So you have everyone contribute in writing first, hmm. and then you can have a more focused and productive discussion. Based on what's already been written. Exactly. It streamlines things. It does. Yeah. It ensures every perspective is considered I like it. You know, that's a great example of how you can take a traditional meeting structure mm -hmm. and really reimagine it right. for a remote environment. Exactly. What are the practical tips? Well, he also talks a lot about mastering time zones. Time zones. Time zones. This one sounds so basic. I know. But I can imagine it makes a huge difference. Oh, it can make or break employee satisfaction and retention. Right. It's huge. If you have a team that's scattered mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah, across different continents. That's got to be a pain point. Oh, it's a nightmare if it's not managed well. So what are some strategies for managing that? Simple things like setting virtual office hours. Okay. And embracing flexible scheduling can make a world of difference. Mm. It shows your team that you respect their time yeah. and you're willing to work with their individual needs. Right. You know. It's adapting to that global decentralized workforce. Absolutely. I like it. Yeah. Okay, give me one more. Okay, one more that's worth mentioning is the concept of sweet tension. Sweet tension. Okay, no, tension. Sweet tension. Okay, I need you to explain this one. Okay, so think of it as this delicate balance of challenge mm -hmm. within the team. Okay. Not so much pressure that people feel overwhelmed. Right. But enough to keep them engaged and prevent complacency. Just enough to keep them on their toes. Exactly. Just enough to keep those creative juices flowing yeah. and push people to grow. Finding that sweet spot. Finding that sweet spot right. where people are stretching their abilities yeah. and feeling motivated without burning out. It sounds like it requires a very deep understanding of your team mm -hmm. and their individual capacity. For sure. Right. And it's something that leaders need to constantly monitor and adjust mm -hmm. as the team evolves and yeah. the work changes. So this is all starting to come together. Right. But what about building community? Uh, like that so feels especially tough. It is a challenge. With a remote or freelance workforce. Yeah. But Lopez is a firm believer that community is absolutely crucial. Even in a remote setting. Especially in a remote setting. Okay. Because it combats the isolation that can right. come with remote work. Yeah. And it allows you to harness the full potential mm. of a diverse and global workforce. So how do you actually go about building that sense of community mm -hmm. when people are working from all over the place? He suggests a few different strategies. Okay. One is embracing what he calls unifying symbols. Unifying symbol. Unifying symbol. Okay, that sounds a little strange. I know it sounds a bit strange at first. Yeah. But it's really about creating a shared identity for the team. Okay, so things like team names. Yes. Emblems. Mm -hmm. Even anthems. Exactly like we were talking about earlier. Right. You know, with those historical figures. Like having a team theme song. It might sound a bit cheesy. Yeah. But it can actually be incredibly effective. Okay. Especially for remote teams. It gives people something to rally around. Yeah. A sense of belonging. A sense of belonging. Yeah. That transcends physical location. It's like you're building a virtual water cooler. I love that analogy. Yeah. You're building that virtual water cooler where people can connect yeah. and share those experiences. I like that. What else? Uh, Lopez is also a proponent of a model called Teal Organizations. Teal Organizations. Teal Organizations. I've heard of this, Yeah. but I don't know that I fully understand. Okay, so it's a model of organizational development mm -hmm. that emphasizes things like self-management, okay. wholeness, mm -hmm. and purpose. So it aligns really well. It does. With the whole gig economy ethos. Yeah, where people are looking for more autonomy and meaning in their work. Yeah. Teal organizations are all about empowering individuals, mm -hmm. fostering collaboration, yeah. creating a sense of shared purpose. I mean, it seems like they're designed to be very flexible and adaptable. They are. 
which makes them well suited for this kind of work. Yeah, for managing remote and freelance teams. It sounds like a very different way of thinking about organizational structure. It is. Compared to the traditional hierarchical models. Right. Yeah. It's a shift in mindset. Yeah. For sure. And it's gaining traction as more companies embrace remote work. It is. In the gig economy. Yeah, it's definitely a trend to watch. Okay, so last but not least, okay. Lopez talks about servant leadership. Yeah, servant leadership. Can you unpack that one for me? Okay, so the core idea is that in a remote setting, mm -hmm. leaders need to act as enablers. Okay. They focus on removing obstacles mm -hmm. and supporting their team's growth yeah. rather than dictating what needs to be done. So it's less about controlling people right. and more about empowering them. Exactly. Interesting. It's about creating an environment where people feel supported, mm -hmm. trusted, and motivated to do their best work. I like it. You know? So all this talk about building community within a company mm -hmm. is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. But Lopez takes it a step further. He does. He believes that companies should also be actively engaged mm -hmm. in their broader communities. Yeah, through social good initiatives. He's a big believer in the power of purpose-driven work. He is. And giving back. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about writing a check, right? No, it's about finding causes that resonate with your team mm -hmm. and using your collective power to make a positive impact yeah. in the world. And I imagine this approach can really help to build bonds within a company. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you're working remotely. Shared experiences, yeah. especially those focused on social good, mm -hmm. can create such a strong sense of camaraderie and purpose. And it transcends mm -hmm. physical distance. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. He actually shares a great example from his own experience in the book. He does, his teams created a charity box. Charity box. Where people could make voluntary weekly donations to a chosen cause. Okay. And even with a remote big workforce, mm -hmm. they were able to raise $35,000 annually. That's awesome. It is pretty amazing. It just goes to show you that you can build a culture of giving, mm -hmm. no matter how your team is structured. Absolutely. And it's not just about the money either. Right. It's about finding ways to connect with something bigger than ourselves hmm. and use our skills and resources to make a positive difference. So he really encourages leaders to think about the needs mm -hmm. in their own communities. Right. What issues resonate with their team? Yeah. How can they contribute in a meaningful way? Yeah. You know, he believes that these social good initiatives. Mm hmm can be a really powerful way to strengthen company culture. For sure. Boost morale. Mm -hmm. Create that sense of shared purpose. Absolutely. That goes beyond the walls of the company. 100%. This has been really eye-opening. It has. Like this deep dive into the world of leading mm -hmm. remote and freelance teams. It really highlights how leadership is evolving. Yeah. And yeah. the need to adapt to this changing landscape of work. It's not just about managing tasks anymore. No. It's about leading with your head and your heart. And building a culture of trust, mm -hmm. flexibility, yeah. and purpose. So much great food for thought here. There is. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to continue our exploration of leading the unknown. Time to go. With Nuri Demirci Lopez. I'm looking forward to it. Stay tuned. It really highlights how leadership is evolving and the need to adapt to this changing landscape of work. It's not just about managing tasks anymore. No. It's about leading with your head and your heart and building a culture of trust, flexibility, and purpose. So much great food for thought here. There is. So we're gonna take a quick break. Okay. And we'll be right back to continue our exploration of leading the unknown. Sounds good. With Nuri Demirci Lopez. Stay tuned. I'm looking forward to it. Welcome back to the deep dive. Yes, welcome back. We've been exploring the changing landscape of leadership. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's really struck me yeah. is how much emphasis Nuri puts on the human element. He's really passionate about it, yeah. about building those connections yeah. and fostering genuine relationships within teams. It's not just about managing tasks or hitting deadlines. Right. It's about understanding what motivates people, Yeah. what they aspire to, what they might be afraid of, even what they might be afraid of. Yeah. You have to really see them as whole people, Yeah. not just employees. And he believes that creating that culture of trust Mm -hmm. Respect and support mm. is essential for getting the best out of any team. Absolutely. Especially when you're dealing with the unique dynamics of remote and freelance work. Because there's so much that can get lost right. in translation. You yeah. Know? And this whole idea of servant leadership. 
Mm -hmm. It's really about shifting the focus from power and control to service, isn't it? Exactly. It's about empowering others to succeed. Yeah. And creating an environment where everyone feels valued and heard. It's a very different approach to leadership than what a lot of us might be used to. It is. It's a shift in mindset. So we've covered a lot of practical tips, mm -hmm. but Lopez also delves into the more philosophical aspects of leadership, oh, yeah. like finding purpose. Yeah. He talks about the importance of asking why. Why are we doing this? Yeah. What's the bigger picture? Why are we doing this work? Exactly. What's the bigger picture? It's about aligning your team around a shared purpose. Yeah. Something that gives their work meaning mm -hmm. and motivates them to go the extra mile. He also talks a lot about values, mm -hmm. establishing those guiding principles that shape a company's culture. Values are so important, yeah. especially in today's world. And guide everyone's actions. It's about walking the talk, you know? Yeah. When a company's values are clearly defined mm. and consistently reflected in its actions, it builds trust and credibility. It does. Both internally and externally. Which is especially important in a world where remote work and freelancing are becoming the norm. Because you need that strong foundation of trust. Right. When you're not physically together all the time. You know, one concept that I found really intriguing is this idea of leading the unknown. Ah, uh, yes, leading the unknown. What exactly does Lopez mean by that? Well, he's acknowledging that the world is changing so rapidly mm. that we can't possibly predict what the future holds. Right. You know, we're all navigating uncharted territory in many ways. So how do you lead effectively when you don't know what's around the next corner? It requires a different kind of mindset. Okay. You need to be comfortable with uncertainty, mm -hmm. adaptable to change, and willing to embrace risk. It's about letting go of the need to control everything, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You have to trust your team, yeah. empower them to find solutions, mm -hmm. and be willing to experiment and learn as you go. The best leaders in this new world are the ones who can embrace the unknown. Exactly. And guide their teams through it. It's not about having all the answers. Right. It's about being able to navigate the uncertainty. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Nuri's book, Leading the Unknown, mm -hmm. what are some key takeaways okay. that we can apply to our own work and leadership journeys? I think the biggest takeaway is that leadership is not a destination. It's an ongoing journey of learning, growth, and evolution. You're always learning. Always learning, always growing. Yeah. It's about being open to new ideas. Mm -hmm different perspectives really? and constantly seeking to improve your skills and never losing sight of the human element exactly at the end of the day leadership is about people yeah it's about inspiring them motivating them and helping them achieve their full potential and in a world that's becoming increasingly remote ai driven and freelance focused that human connection is more important than ever. It really is what makes all the difference. This deep dive has given us so much to think about. It has. So as you go about your day today, mm -hmm. consider how you can be a more human-centered leader. That's a great challenge. How can you connect with your team on a deeper level? Yeah, how can you foster that sense of trust, respect, and support? And perhaps most importantly, how can you empower your team to navigate the unknown together. Those are great questions to reflect on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. And keep leading with both your head and your heart. Absolutely. Welcome back to the deep dive. Yes, welcome back. We've been exploring the changing landscape of leadership. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's really struck me yeah. is how much emphasis Nuri puts on the human element. He's really passionate about it, about yeah. building those connections yeah. and fostering genuine relationships within teams. It's not just about managing tasks or hitting deadlines. Right. It's about understanding mm -hmm. what motivates people. Yeah. What they aspire to. What they might be afraid of. Even what they might be afraid of. Yeah, you have to really see them as whole people. Yeah. Not just employees. And he believes that creating that culture of trust, mm -hmm. respect, and support is essential for getting the best out of any team. Absolutely. Especially when you're dealing with the unique dynamics of remote and freelance work. Because there's so much that can get lost right. in translation. you know. Yeah, and this whole idea of servant leadership, it's really about shifting the focus from power and control to service, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. It's about empowering others to succeed yeah. and creating an environment where everyone feels valued and heard. It's a very different approach to leadership than what a lot of us might be used to. It is. It's a shift in mindset. So we've covered a lot of practical tips, mm. but Lopez also delves into 
the more philosophical aspects of leadership. He does. Like finding purpose. Yeah. He talks about the importance of asking why. Why are we doing this? Yeah. What's the bigger picture? Why are we doing this work? <laughs> exactly. What's the bigger picture? It's about aligning your team around a shared purpose. Yeah. Something that gives their work meaning mm -hmm. and motivates them to go the extra mile. He also talks a lot about values. Mm -hmm. Establishing those guiding principles that shape a company's culture. Values are so important. Yeah. Especially in today's world. And guide everyone's actions. It's about walking the talk, you know? When a company's values are clearly defined. Mm -hmm. And consistently reflected in its actions, it builds trust and credibility. It does. Both internally and externally. Which is especially important in a world where remote work and freelancing are becoming the norm. Because you need that strong foundation of trust. Right. When you're not physically together all the time. You know, one concept that I found really intriguing is this idea of leading the unknown. Ah, yes, leading the unknown. What exactly does Lopez mean by that? Well, he's acknowledging that the world is changing so rapidly mm -hmm. that we can't possibly predict what the future holds. Right. You know, we're all navigating uncharted territory in many ways. So how do you lead effectively when you don't know what's around the next corner? It requires a different kind of mindset. Okay. You need to be comfortable with uncertainty, mm -hmm. adaptable to change, and willing to embrace Risk. It's about letting go of the need to control everything. Isn't Absolutely. It? You have to trust your team. Yeah. Empower them to find solutions. Uh. Be willing to experiment and learn as you go. The best leaders in this new world are the ones who can embrace the unknown. Exactly. And guide their teams through. It's not about having all the answers. Right. It's about being able to navigate the uncertainty. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Nuri's book, Leading the Unknown, mm -hmm. what are some key takeaways okay. that we can apply to our own work and leadership journeys? I think the biggest takeaway is that leadership is not a destination. Mm. It's an ongoing journey of learning, growth, and evolution. You're always learning. Always learning, always growing. Yeah. It's about being open to new ideas, mm -hmm. different perspectives, yeah. and constantly seeking to improve your skills. And never losing sight of the human element. Exactly. At the end of the day, leadership is about people. Yeah. It's about inspiring them, motivating them, and helping them achieve their full potential. And in a world that's becoming increasingly remote, AI-driven, and freelance-focused, that human connection is more important than ever. It really is. It's what makes all the difference. This deep dive has given us so much to think about. It has. So as you go about your day today, mm -hmm. consider how you can be a more human-centered leader. That's a great challenge. How can you connect with your team on a deeper level? Yeah. How can you foster that sense of trust, respect, and support. And perhaps most importantly, how can you empower your team to navigate the unknown together? Those are great questions to reflect on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. And keep leading with both your head and your heart. Absolutely.